Now, it's well over a year since Prince Andrew's Newsnight interview and the calls remain for him to talk to the FBI. Some are asking what impact perhaps President Biden will have in making this happen. Well, US lawyer Gloria Ulrich, who represents 19 of Jeffrey Epstein's accusers, joins me now. Very, very good to see you this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. You so too. Here we are, um, new president. Do you think it will make any difference at all, this, this new regime, if you like? Well, uh, it's difficult to say because we're waiting to see who is going to be the new head of the Justice Department in the United States. Uh, president Biden has nominated Merrick Garland, who's a very well-respected judge. And in fact, uh, President Obama had nominated him for the vacancy in the United States Supreme Court, but the Republicans refused to give him a hearing. Uh, in any event, so he never became uh, the person who was elevated to the United States Supreme Court. But uh, assuming that he is, in fact, confirmed by the Senate, he will become the new attorney general. And then he Sorry, Gloria, we're just having a few sound problems, unfortunately, and I know it's difficult for you to to um, to hear what Gloria is saying. We'll try and get that sorted out. Sorry about that, but you know what it's like in these days, the way that we have to talk one, to one another by Zooms and all the rest of it. But let's stay with Royal News because uh, we were talking about Prince Andrew there and uh, our Royal Editor, Russell Myers, is with us. And interesting news, um, which he's not going to like, uh, the fact that his company is not doing well at all. Not unexpected though, Russell. No, good morning, Lorraine. And, and it isn't. I mean, I think it's been a, uh, a very, very difficult year, to put it mildly, for Prince Andrew. And the news has emerged that his flagship project, Pitch at Palace and Pitch at Global, have had a raft of employees leave. Up to 15, it has been reported. And this is adding insult to injury to the Prince. Obviously, his reputation lies in tatters after his awful interview he gave to the BBC. I mean, he still hasn't spoken to the FBI. You had Laurie Allred speaking about the surrounding nature of the case. Uh, obviously, he has denied all the allegations in front of him, but until he inks that date in his diary, I think it's going to go from bad to worse for him, unfortunately. No, it really was interesting what Gloria said. Unfortunately, as you could hear, we had the, the sound problem, but she was talking about the fact that the new, the fact that we've got a new president um, might in, in some ways change this. Let, let's just see if we can get Gloria back because I think we can manage to talk to her now. Okay. Hey, Gloria, how are you? Hi, I hope that's oh, better. That's beautiful. So, that's yeah. beautiful. We've got you back. So, yeah, we, we think that possibly this might maybe speed things on a little bit, because I know you've been trying for so well, long to get to talk yeah, to him. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. And then we have to wait, you know, to see who the new attorney general will, in fact, appoint to head up the investigation by the Southern District of New York, the federal investigation. But, you know, it may or not, may or may not make any difference. What I think is really interesting is, and this is something that has been reported, but neither the UK... Uh, police, nor the uh, prosecutor in the United States will confirm it. But it's reported that the United States has asked for the mutual legal assistance treaty with the UK. And what that simply, and the UK Home Office will also not confirm that that's asked, that's always under seal. But if that's true, what's being reported, then they're asking that Prince Andrew give a witness statement uh, or produce documents. But He's not compelled to do it. It's not a matter for the court. He is not the subject, in other words, the target of the investigation. He's simply being asked to provide a witness statement, which, of course, he seemed to say in the BBC interview a long time ago that he would do. But to date, it does not appear that he has done it. There is not going to be any extradition, extradition unless he becomes a subject that is a target of the investigation. Even then, he would have to go to court uh, in the UK if he is summoned, but he could be silent. He could decide that whatever he would say might cause him to incriminate himself, so he would not have to testify. It hasn't come to that yet because he's not charged with anything, but I am wondering, and I'm sure many people are wondering, what's going on? Why does he not appear to have even given a witness statement in this very serious investigation into the conspiracy to sex traffic underage girls. And uh, even though Jeffrey Epstein is no longer alive, there is an investigation, there is a prosecution of Ms. Maxwell, 
So we'll have to wait and see what happens here. No, we absolutely will. And I need to ask you about the, the women that you represent and how how they are, because this must be, you know, it's, it's been dragging on for such a long time. I mean, I know external circumstances like the, the small matter of a pandemic, um, but, but how are they doing? Uh, they're doing hard. They're doing OK. It's hard. I am representing many of them, 19 of them in the claims process has been set up for them where they can confidentially uh, talk to a claims administrator and seek to be compensated from the estate of Jeffrey Epstein, the funds that have been allocated for this purpose to try to compensate the victims. So we are preparing their cases. We are assisting them with the claims administrators and in the interviews that take place. And by the way, if there are any other victims, they have only a very short time to apply. So they should contact me or another attorney as soon as possible if they want to be part of this potential compensation process for the victims which is completely confidential. It's not a court process, but it's, a, I think, a very fair process to attempt to compensate them. So I think that's one form of justice that they are seeking, that they are being afforded. Uh, and you know, we'll have to see whether any of them end up testifying in the case against Ms. Maxwell. Indeed. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you. Sorry about the sound problems, but thank you very much. We should say that Ghislaine Maxwell and Prince Andrew have always uh, denied all of these allegations. Right, let's rejoin our royal editor, Russell Myers. And we were talking about uh, Prince Andrew's business. There is um, there's, uh, more interesting news as well. Um, <laughs> that I'm not surprised by this either, that the Crown, because you know we always say, and we've said before, do you think any of them actually watch it? Well, we know that Fergie watches, doesn't she? Well, we certainly do now. And you're, who, the, who would the money be on the smart money would definitely have been on Fergie. No stranger to a bit of self-publicity. Uh, so she's come out and said how wonderful the programme was. Obviously, it depicts her 1986 marriage to Prince Andrew. And she's saying about uh, the cinematography. She thought it was uh, excellent and she's enjoyed watching it. I mean, it all gives us a laugh, Fergie. She's, she's always in the papers and uh, we, we do love to see her pop up every now and then. I think they all watch it. How could they not? You would be, you, even if you just had a sneaky five minutes, you'd want to. Now, look, very, very, very good news for Kate and William and especially for their children. Yeah, definitely. A bit of light in the darkness. And for the uh, for the Cambridges, especially the, the kids as well, their lovely, adored dog, Lupo, their Cocker Spaniel, died recently, just a couple of months ago. There he is, a uh, beautiful Cocker Spaniel. But they've got another one, James Middleton, Kate's brother, actually breeds them. And he had a huge sort of litter in 2011. That's where Lupo came from. And this new dog, we don't know the name yet, but we do know it's a little girl that has been welcomed into the family. And uh, the kids are are absolutely besotted with it, I'm told. Oh, they will be. And I'm sure, because Kate always takes uh, lovely pictures of the children, I'm sure over the next couple of days and weeks, she'll take a photo of the wee puppy, because there's nothing like a puppy to cheer you up. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's what we need. It's what we need. Now, again, this is no surprise. The hardest working royal has been confirmed. And this woman, always under the radar, always just gets on with it. She's one of these people who just says, right, stuff and nonsense. I'm just going to get on with it. It's like those... French and Saunders sketches, really. <laughs> exactly. Well, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree where Princess Anne is concerned, taking leaf out of her mother's book. Always very, very hard working. But now it's official. Even though COVID has sort of wrecked all of our plans, even for royal engagements, royal tours, Princess Anne notched up 148 engagements in just 100 and 45 days last year. Obviously, some of those were on Zoom, but they are have been very, very hard work. And Princess Anne, as you say, always under the radar. Prince Charles coming in at number two. I think he notched up 146 over 141 days. The Queen slotting in at number three, just over 135 jobs. William and Kate, actually, we are they are renowned for working very, very hard, especially in coronavirus. But they're down at number fifth and eighth. But I think we'll give them a bit of slack because they've been in homeschooling hell like a lot of other parents across the country. <laughs> they have indeed, and they've been doing loads and loads of stuff on Zoom. And again, very under the radar. We know they do an awful lot of that too, but we just probably don't hear about it as much. Thank you, Russell. Thank you so much indeed. Great to see you as always. I'll see you real soon. Thank you. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here.
to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.